Hi, I'm Stevie C and the Poise to Be. I'm keeping this video brief as I honestly expect it to get pulled for reasons that will become obvious. A friend of mine is a massive fan of the fashion designer Vivian Westwood, so I had this one-off PCB manufactured as a present for him. Electronically, there's nothing of note, just 330 LEDs, 13 cell resistor networks, and a 12-volt DC supply. The first thing I'll do is spray paint the PCB black as this will look better. I'll be back in one second. One second later and the deed it is done. I don't have long to complete this project, so I'll do it in time lapse. So cue the time lapse and cue the music. I'll solder the LEDs onto the front, and I'm undecided whether I'll put the cell resistors onto the front or the back for neatness. I'll use the technique of soldering one leg of the LED, then checking the component is level before following the next one. I thought I'd be able to claim my video as a transformative work that didn't do any disservice to the original. As far as I know, creating this design in LED format has never been done before and it gives it a new twist. Then I thought about going for a parody defense by assembling 50 quid's worth of components and then whacking on a two grand price tag as a visual aid sight gag. Then I read that the VW orb was in itself an homage to the Harris Tweed orb Please don't tell me I'm going to have to design a Harris Tweed or PCB to show them side by side for a commentary, criticism or educational defence now. Designing this one was hard enough. For legal reasons I have to point out that I'm in no way connected to, associated with or endorsed by the Vivian Westwood estate or her company. What I've created in this video for this one-off, non-commercial project is essentially fan art or techno art if you will. I will not be selling the PCBs or the finished product, nor will I make the Gerber files available. As she herself said, buy less, choose well, make it last. Quality, not quantity. That took quite a bit longer than I thought it would. For some reason, my solder was sticking to the iron somehow. It wasn't a point of the LED leads. Well, some it was, some it wasn't. I don't understand. That's it assembled. I opted to put the cell resistors on the back for neatness. And I've genuinely not tested it. As you can see, I've not stripped the wires yet. It's not all going to work, is it? Eh? Hang on a minute. Why are those two? Oh no. Oh, for crying out loud. It's just up about nine volts now. I remember what a pain three millimeter wads were to work with, actually. Don't know if you'll see that, but there's a. Please don't say that's the pad broken. That's bridged. There is either an error in my file or an error in my board. What I don't understand though, is that those sides would have been copied from each other. I just built half of it and then flipped the design around. So why don't both sides have the problem? I'll show you the other file, or the other board rather. It's actually on the left. Shut up. Right, no idea, please. So again, I'll show you in B-roll what I've done. You see what else of the problem with these two middle sections might be a bit of an air gap. 
Positive, positive. Where's the wires? Goodness sakes, Stevie. Please work because I need my bed. Yes. So yeah, at 12 volts, that's averaging 500 milliamps, give or take. Obviously it'll vary up and down depending on what color the RGB LEDs are doing. So that's it all assembled, but I've come a gutter in several ways. The first way is that, as we saw from one of the LEDs not working, the mistake was mine, not JLC PCBs. I've checked the design file in Sprint Layout, and as you'll now see from the screenshot, it was my fault. You can see for some reason there's an errant track swept in that bridges out that LED, so I have no idea how that happened. That's the danger of spending 30 hours plus designing a file and changing it, you know, mains voltage, low voltage, USB, changing the style, that sort of thing over and over, I suppose. So, yeah. It happened. I dealt with it. As I say, it's a one-off prototype that isn't for sale for obvious reasons and it works so as long as people don't look inside it's fine but i'll show you inside now i'm just going to prop the edges up with two spools of solder because obviously the leds protrude out is that going to balance yeah so if we take the lid off as it were it reveals all manner of sins so the second place I came with Gutzer, obviously, was I was going to go down to the local art gallery to buy a suitable frame because I haven't had much luck finding... I needed a really deep frame, which I couldn't find in the likes of Poundland, B&M, Home Bargains, Factory Shop, that sort of store. Um, and unfortunately, the search engine lied to me. It said the store was open when it was closed and I need to get this done today, so that's not happening. What I've done is I've glued two B&M frames together, which seems to be holding together. So, you know, we can see where I've glued the PCB into the first frame. Hue B-roll. Uh, that was the next place I came and got to. I burnt myself with a glue gun again and found out that what had been sold to me as a high-power rapid reheat gun was nothing of the sort. That was all lies. And so it was a bit of a scuffle to get the two halves glued together while not gluing myself to something. You can see where I've had to cut away part of the frame to get the DC jack into the frame. Again, this is... It, feels quite solid, actually. I've used solid core cable, so we've just got a common negative bus bar, the same little bodge, because again, I couldn't really find a way for that trace to go otherwise, but what people don't see won't bother them. All it remains is to assemble it, give you a demonstration, and send it off. If you liked this video, prove it by clicking the thumbs up. If you disliked it, that button does something as well. Maybe perhaps don't share this one, but feel free to leave a comment. And until next time, thanks for watching.